Hi, I'm Austin Elliott, a PhD graduate student in the Department of Geology here at Davis, and I'm going to be showing you some topographic data that we use for analysis in the cave. Um, last year in April, there was a magnitude 7.2 earthquake just south of the U.S.-Mexico border in Baja, California. Uh, UC Davis researchers, including myself, fellow graduate student Peter Gold, and faculty member Dr. Mike Oskin, uh, traveled down to Mexico with a terrestrial LIDAR scanner. LIDAR, uh, basically it's an instrument that emits a laser pulse and records the distance to objects that reflect the, the laser pulse, uh, generating a 3D model of its surroundings. We use these 3D models in the cave to understand the deformation that accompanied the earthquake last spring. So, here's one of our data sets. <coughs> This is a, a mountainside, and what I can do uh, to begin with is bring up a, bring up a sun, basically. So we'll start by adding the uh, a light source that illuminates the topography that we captured using our laser scanner. We're looking at a we're looking at a mountainside here, and you can see the fault cutting across the landscape. Uh, there are channels that are offset across this fault. This all occurred during the course of less than a minute uh, during this earthquake. So what you have is an immediate change to the landscape that we're trying to track over time. Uh, not only to see the effects of erosion, but also just to measure what actually happens during an earthquake, how much displacement there is, and how it disrupts the landscape. For example, here in this central part, uh, you can see a few streams that come out of the mountains and drop down, and they're offset not only downward, but also uh, on this side, they've moved that way. This is basically the definition of a right lateral fault. No matter which side you stand on, whether we stand here and look across the fault, uh, the other side has moved to the right. If we stand on this side of the fault and look on the other side, it's also moved to the right. It's the definition of a right lateral strike slip fault. With LiDAR Viewer, um, this program that we use in the cave, we can adjust the sun angle manually to illuminate different aspects of the topography. For example, if I want to see those streams I was just pointing out in, in high relief, I would put the sun somewhere nearly perpendicular to their orientation. If I want to see the face of the fault scarp, I put the sun out in front of it to give us better perspectives on the topography we've captured. Some notable features of the, um, of the data we have are this interesting change in slope on the hillside over here. So the the hillside slopes up from from the this is the east side of it slopes up to the west and right where the escarpment from this earthquake is you can see a change in the slope of the landscape up on top it's nice and flat it slopes downward then there's an abrupt break steeper slope and it flattens out again. This portion of the landscape that has a steeper slope than the rest that surrounds the modern rupture represents an old degraded earthquake rupture. So in this case we know that this fault has had at least one previous seismic event that created a scarp like this in exactly this spot. Another thing we can show you uh, using the LiDAR data uh, is some of the capability that the, the CAVE software has to identify, um, to select points and to pick out subsets of your data that can be used for other sorts of display and analysis. So let's zoom in here to a patch of the fault. 
here, we're looking at a portion of the earthquake rupture that's about a meter and a half tall. So from the lower side here, we, uh -oh, we, cross the, uh, we cross the fault face, and the upper portion of it is, has been raised about five or six feet, almost the height of a human. Um, what I'm going to show you now is uh, how we can assess basically how straight this fault is, how even the surface we're looking at is, by selecting points along it. So we have points that roughly define our fault surface, and we're going to fit a geometric primitive to them. Uh, actually, here we're going to extract a plane that averages all these uh, all these points that I've selected along the fault, but it's going to additionally indicate. Uh oh, <laughs> something that I don't need it to. Yeah, there must have. <laughs> um, oh well. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Guess I must have hit the button behind my head or something. <clears throat> so, uh, what I've done here is accidentally selected points on uh, a large swath of the data. So, I'm just going to go ahead and clear some of this up. Try again. We can subtract points just as easily, luckily. So, I'll move back in and I'll make a more precise selection uh, along the fault here. Oops, let's add points. So I'm choosing portions of the free face of this escarpment uh, that represent basically the the vertical actual face of the fault. At the top of it, you can see, and especially right here actually, you can see where material has fallen off of the scarp. This happened during the shaking of the earthquake. Uh, material fell from the top and landed in this pile in the bottom. Uh, it filled in this hole that opened along along the fault as the sides moved apart they sort of split, move downward and outward. So now, with a <laughs> more reasonable selection, um, I'm going to try this little exercise again of fitting a geometric plane to it. And we have markers on here that indicate uh, the orientation of this plane. In geology, we're going to call these a strike and a dip. The strike is the horizontal tra trace of any plane in space. We use it to define the orientation of sedimentary layers, or in this case, of fault surfaces. Uh, so the blue represents this orientation from vertical. We see it says 85 degrees, which is about what we expect. It's a nearly vertical face. Uh, it's the orientation away from horizontal, actually. Uh, and then this shows the direction that that plane is inclined in. So it's inclined from vertical, from horizontal, pardon me, uh, 85 degrees and then in a, at an azimuth of nearly 45 degrees, uh, almost due northwest. Well, that would be due northeast. Uh, but the fault itself uh, we would call the strike of this structure uh, northwest. That's going off that way, which is perpendicular to the direction that it's tilted, the dip direction. What we can also do with these selected points and the plane that they define is display the distance of any other points in the data set from this feature in this case, from the fault. 
And what this will do is help us define just how straight the fault is as it cuts through the landscape. So let me show you as we scale down our, our color ramp. So it goes from uh, red at the high end this way through yellow, green, and blue to purple and then red again on the other side of the structure. We can just close that in and we'll really start highlighting the fault. Uh, so as you can see when we have it colored this way much of this fault surface is at about the same is along approximately the same plane as uh, I've defined, which makes it a very remarkably straight feature, uh, especially for nature. <laughs> um, what this also shows us is some of the topography on the fault surface. And what comes across in this data set, you can see very clearly here. Let me get our, uh, let me get our plane out of the way. What you can see very clearly here is this undulating pattern along the fault surface here, where we have these streaks of sort of greener, hot, you know, closer portions of the fault that are closer to us, portions that are back farther from us in blue, and they're, they alternate and they're surprisingly linear uh, in this direction, which, surprise, surprise, is the direction that these channels along the fault are offset. So what these show us are actually grooves carved along the fault surface during the earthquake. And they match very well with, they match approximately with the slip direction that we measure from offset features. Offset features like the walls of this channel. It appears here that on uh, the left side of this channel there's much greater displacement across the fault than here on the right side. But that's just an effect of the apparent vertical motion caused by rightward motion uh, of both sides. Well, of the other side, from our perspective. So this is just a sampling of some of the uh, features we can see in LiDAR data of uh, of landscapes, and in particular of recently faulted landscapes. Uh, the UC Davis team that originally scanned this has gone back down and repeated the scan, and we've begun to document erosion over the last rainy season since last year. So it's a very exciting data set to be using, and it's a very exciting uh, facility to have at our hands to analyze it with.